What's up, guys? This is Kefis. Today, I'm going to show you some macros that I've created with GNOME Sequencer Enhanced, an extremely powerful add-on that allows you to create robust macros that can perform most, if not all, of your rotation with a single button. This can be extremely useful if you have a disability like myself, or if you just want to be lazy. Bear in mind that these macros can be extremely helpful, but they also have their limits, so they're made primarily for those who are playing the game at a more casual level but feel free to use them as you see fit. If you'd like to learn more about GNOME Sequencer and how to use it, I recommend that you head over to WoW Lazy Macros. You can find links to all of that and to import strings for these macros in the description. Today, we're gonna check out the macro that I've created for Destruction Warlocks. Now, this one turned out to be a lot easier than I expected. In fact, I think it was even easier than Affliction Warlocks, but I did have to deviate a little bit from what I would assume to be the more optimal build to make it work, and you'll see what I mean when we open up our talent tree here and you'll see what I've gone with. Now, a lot of it was, again, as I always like to say, very straightforward. Uh, under the Warlock side of the tree, there are some very obvious abilities here, uh, or talents, I should say, that do just buff your character and you obviously these ones here that buff you and your pets. Uh, and then of course, if you go down here, you've got, you know, abilities that increase the damage uh, of incinerate and also this one, which increases the damage of immolate. Those are kind of obvious. Everything else really is, uh, you know, more utility focused, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, not a whole lot in terms of, you know, straight up buffs, but like, you know, like this one here is, a, I went with this one over this one because like, this is a cast ability, whereas this one's more passive. So, like, again, a lot of what I've gone with is just more passive abilities. Um, a good ability that I, I didn't really go with is Soul Burn. I didn't take that. Instead, I've just put an extra uh, point into this ability to make it so I don't take as much damage from Burning Rush. But you could also sacrifice this point, uh, one point of this, uh, to go with uh, Soul Burn if you want to take Soul Burn. So... A lot of it really is just passive stuff, but it's it's up to you what you do. None of it's really going to affect how the actual macro works. Um, but yeah, it's just something to keep in mind. Now, under this side of the tree, this is where things get kind of interesting. So there are a lot of options here. There are different ways you can go. Some really cool talents that I didn't take. Uh, right off the bat, I'll just give you an example. I did not go down the Reign of Fire part of the tree. Uh, this is a good AoE ability, okay? The problem that... I personally have obviously it doesn't work with the macro uh, it's not gonna work in macros um, at all and so that's that's a big problem and also it does because it takes soul shards it does compete with chaos bolt when you're fighting multiple enemies this is not going to work in a macro okay so I've just decided to say heck with it and not even bother taking it <laughs> um, but that obviously you know that does sacrifice a lot of AoE damage there and also, you know, going down and taking Cataclysm. Uh, this is a cool ability. Again, it's a target location ability, and that doesn't work, again, well with the macro. So I have not taken Cataclysm. That's why, just in general, I decided to say, heck, with this, I'm not going to go down this part of the tree at all. And again, this also applies uh, for uh, Summon Infernal, which is another really, really cool ability that I can't really use because it doesn't work well in the macro. Now, you could use them on separate buttons, all of them, um, but, you know, I also play with uh, console port, and it's hard to use target location abilities with console port. It's not impossible, uh, but it's just not the easiest thing. I don't like target location abilities regardless. I never have. Just, I don't know, I don't like them. So, um, I've avoided them, but you could totally go with them. I mean, like, for example, one talent that I took that probably isn't as good is this one which extends the duration of immolate um the reason why i went with this talent is it makes it easier to manage immolate in the macro uh and also just in general so it's kind of like an easier talent to go with though it may not be the best option it's certainly an easier option and i've also taken this ability soul fire uh, this does get a lot of benefits from some of the other talents that i've taken but it also maybe isn't best talent i mean it's it's fine 
Uh, it's going to generate Soul Shard. It's also going to cast Emulate for you. So this being easily put in the macro will allow Emulate to be cast automatically. So like when you start the fight, you shouldn't have to cast Emulate. The macro will do it for you uh, through Soul Fire. But then obviously when Emulate is off cooldown, you're going to have to cast it then. Uh, or well, I should say when Emulate expires or is about to, you're going to have to cast Emulate then. Uh, but initially, you won't have to worry about it as much. And also, every 45 seconds, it will reapply Emulate for you. So either extend it or reapply it either way. Um, there were, I mean, like there's Soul Burn, which I didn't take. I kind of wanted to. It just seems like a really cool ability, but I didn't. Uh, I went with other options. And I tried to keep it as simple as possible, but I felt like adding this in to kind of help keep up with them, Emulate was nice. Uh, but yeah, in general, like you could you could take this away. You could definitely take uh, these two points away and then add them to Rain of Fire line if you want to. It's entirely up to you. Uh, but in general, most of what I've gone with is more passive stuff, keeping focus on your core rotation. It's actually a very straightforward rotation. We'll get into the macro itself. Uh, going down here at the bottom, again, I didn't go with Summon Infernal. Such a cool ability not to take, too. It's just, man, target location abilities, you know? Uh, but most of what I've gone with here are passives, passives even down here at the bottom, it's just, you know, more passives, obviously, over in favor of non-passives. Blasphemous is a really cool non-pass, or really cool passive ability, and I've kind of buffed that. Another point you could deviate from, you could take a point out of this uh, Master uh, Ritualist, like, because if I take one point out, um, you gain uh, a, a benefit of requiring three less Soul Shards, whereas with two points, you get five less soul shard requirement. So the second point really isn't as valuable as the first. So you can totally take a point out of this and put it into Summon Infernal if you want to, if that's what you want, or put it wherever else you want. So you have some options to kind of go with whatever you want, but I went with a build that, you know, whether or not it's optimal, it's designed to make the rotation easier, therefore making the macro more effective with the rotation so that's kind of the idea here uh, but overall it's a very straightforward rotation just requiring a little bit of a simpler uh, build uh, you know in the talent tree so hopefully that explains why i've gone with the talents i've gone with but just know you can deviate as much as you want so let's go ahead and open up the talent or the actual macro itself by typing slash gse and then if we scroll all the way down here with different macros you will see this is called kef destruction this is an all-in-one macro for destruction warlocks. If you'd like to use my talent build, you can, you know, copy it from here and paste it into the talent tree. With all that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the actual macro. So this is a sequential macro, which means it's going to cycle through each ability. And once it gets to the bottom, it'll come back to the top and cycle through them again. We start things off with Soul Fire. This is to get Immolate active on your target, keeping this ability on cooldown as quickly as possible. Following that up with Chaos Bolt. Whenever you have enough Soul Shards, the macro will cast Chaos Bolt. And then lastly, we have Conflagrate. This will use your Conflagrate, Conflagrate, however you say the word. Uh, this will use your stacks of con conflagrate uh, whenever it can. Um, so there's that as well. Um, and, you know, obviously it's pretty straightforward. Now these are all three inside of the sequence. At the bottom, we have an ability out of the sequence. This is your main filler ability. Incinerate. This is like, I guess, just your main filler cast ability. I've put this out of the sequence because if I put this in the sequence, you're going to be casting incinerate more often than you'd want. So by keeping it out of the sequence, what will happen is the macro will cycle through the sequence twice and then try to use incinerate. So for every time the macro tries to use incinerate, it will use these other abilities uh, twice as often. Okay, so that's just making sure that these abilities are getting a chance to go off more often uh, than incinerate. It's kind of the idea there. I do this with all of my casters. Keeping the filler on the outside of the sequence makes it a lot it makes the macro function a lot more, making sure that the other abilities are actually getting a chance to be used. Okay, so that's kind of the idea there. If we go down here to the bottom, you will see we have a key press. We don't have a key release because this class does not have any off global cooldown abilities uh, to use. So there is that. Uh, so by default, my macro is going to be summoning your Void Walker if you don't have a pet. This is because I do a lot of solo content out in the world. So this is the pet I go with. If you want to use a different pet, 
pet, you can, you know, obviously replace Voidwalker with whichever pet you want to use, or you could just summon that pet manually yourself on a separate button. So there's that as well. And then lastly, we do have Emulate included in the macro. Um, and this will be, you can cast Emulate if you hold down Shift. So that's how you can use Emulate. Otherwise, I mean, if I try to put the Emulate in the macro, obviously it's just going to cast it all the time and you don't want to ever do that. So then lastly, we have Pet Attack to make sure that the macro is sending your pet to actually go attack stuff. It'll attack whatever target you're attacking. So, you know, keep that in mind as well. If you do decide to go with abilities like Reign of Fire or Cataclysm or Summon um, L, uh, uh, the, the big fiery dude, what is it called? Infernal, Inferno, Infernal. Yeah, that's it. Then obviously you'd want to cast those abilities on separate buttons. They wouldn't work in the macro anyways, because it is a target. There are all target location abilities, but you, if you decide to go that route with your talent build, then just know you'd be using those on separate button. Otherwise the macro uh, will be using all of these, right? The last thing I didn't go over is havoc. Now I took the passive version of havoc, which will uh, occasionally cast havoc on nearby enemies. If you do decide to go with havoc, uh, then again, that's another ability that we, you, you would use on a separate button. So if you want to manually control your habit, Havoc and keep it up on a target at all times, then make sure you're managing that one on a separate button as well. Otherwise, <laughs> with my build and with this you know, road macro, you're pretty much going to have a straightforward rotation. Just make sure that you're keeping up with your uh, immolates and otherwise the macro will be using all of your abilities as they become available. So let me know what you think about it in the comments below if you decide to use this. All that being said, I will see you guys on the next one. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, let me know by clicking that like button. And feel free to share it with your friends so they can enjoy it as well. And if you'd like to see more videos, you can subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to be notified as soon as new videos are posted. You can also follow me on Facebook, and if you like, you can support my work on Patreon. Links to all that stuff can be found in the description below. This is Kefis, until next time.